Welcome to episode 170 of The Corner of Knit and Tea. My name is Laura. I'm also known as Fluffy K on Ravelry, Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog over at thecornerofknitandtea.com, which is where this episode and every episode show notes will be. I have an Etsy shop called The Corner of Knit and Tea, where I sell my handspun yarns. And we have a Ravelry group called The Corner of Knit and Tea. If you haven't come over and joined us, uh, we just finished one craft along and we are getting ready to compete in the Ravelinic Games, which is a knitting uh, fun team event over on Ravelry um, corresponding with the Olympics. The Corner of Knit and Tea has a team and if you are interested in joining us, the rules are pretty simple. You define a project that you want to complete between the opening and closing ceremonies of the Olympic Games and you work on it during the Olympic Games. You can watch the Olympics and hopefully you complete your goal by the end and there will be some prize draws. So if you are interested in competing with Team CKT, um, go ahead and look for the Corner of Knit and Tea group. It is the first thread that is stickied at the top of the group. Um, there are, like I said, just a couple rules. They are in the top of the thread. So we would love to have you join us. So hello, how are you? It is Sunday, February 4th, I believe. Um, it is super cold outside. Uh, it was in the teens uh, when we were last out to go out and get groceries, and it has been snowing today. We have about an inch, um, and we were not, I was expecting the cold temperatures, but I was not expecting the snow. Um, the forecast said no snow till Tuesday, but we got a good inch this, this morning, and then we went out to get some lunch and provisions and get ourselves ready for the week. And I'm going to make some soup this evening. Um, so it will be a good winter's day. Um, I am wearing, oh, I forgot to write it down. Um, the fiber is fiber that I spun. It was a waterweed by Hello Yarn and it was a uh, mixed uh, merino and silk. So it had some black in it, which was really great. And the um, pattern is, I think it's Moxie, and I cannot remember who it is by. I will put links in the show notes. Um, I knit this a couple years ago for, uh, for uh, Nanny Swaymo. And um, it is nice and warm. You don't wear it unless the temperatures drop down pretty low because it is super warm, um, but I love it. So that is what I'm wearing today. Let's get into it because I have lots to show you. Um, not all of it am I knitting yet, but I have lots that I want to put on the needles. So today's tea is Sugar and Spice by David's Tea. They no longer carry this one, unfortunately. I bought a huge bag of it when it was going out of stock. Um, it's a black tea blend um, with apples, cinnamon, cloves, carrots, marigold petals, orange peel, and vanilla flavoring. So it is a spicy black tea. It tastes like a cookie. It is lovely and I am drinking it in my Nitty Circle mug, which is by A Scottish Potter. And I forget, hang on, um, Hudson Middleton, Anna Wright is the potter. Um, and I will put a link to that in the show notes as well. It is a beautiful porcelain mug with sheep in Fair Isle sweaters. And there is also a sheep in the bottom of the mug and it says the Knitting Circle right inside that you can sort of see. So I'm drinking my spice tea in my Anna Wright Knitting Circle mug. And that is delicious. So let's talk about the knits this week. I only have one finished object, um, and that is the socks that I was knitting for Roxy. These are the Love Socks by Devin Clement. And I have two socks, but I was gonna fold this one in a way so that I can show you. Um, they have hearts on the heels, um, which are super, super cute. They're a little bit of a pain to knit. Um, they're intarsia, um, and I did the intarsia on Roxy socks. I'm actually just knitting them stranded on Miles socks. I think I like them with the intarsia slightly better because stranded obviously gives it a thicker heel, um, but he's not really doing a lot with socks yet. So mostly I'm making him a pair because I'm making her a pair. <laughs> um, so yeah, so these are the Love Socks by Devin Clement. Um, she wrote, it is a free pattern. She wrote one for um, adults and then she sort of modified it for kids. And so I used the kid modification, which worked out perfectly for Roxy. It was 52 stitches of US zero. Um, the yarn that I am using is Dale Baby Ool, Dale Garn, Baby Ool, and um, I'm probably pronouncing that terribly wrong. Um, and I did red and pink for Roxy's, so I have her socks done and ready to go. 
And then in the not quite a finished object, but getting very, very close, I am working on Miles Pear. So Miles Pear, I decided to make black and red. I am using the same chart for the heart, um, but his, um, he is about 15 months. So I am doing 40 stitches on his sock on size zeros. And I finished the first one last night. And his have also the red heart on the heel. It's a little bit bigger on his because I didn't adjust the chart. Um, the chart was meant to be knit over 26 stitches, but um, the reds are not quite, um, the, I'm sorry, the part that's actually the heart is not that much. It was um, written to have five or six um, stitches on either side of the heart. So he just gets mostly a heart that is his entire heel. And last night I started on the second sock and I did um, the cuff and the heel. So um, the, the cuff and top of the sock and then the heel. So I am ready to basically finish the foot today. I am just where the gusset starts. This is kind of hard to show you, but I'm just where the gusset starts. And so his socks will be finished hopefully this evening. And then I'm gonna put together a little Valentine's Day package for the kids. I got them each a small toy and um, a little box of four chocolates. So I'm gonna send that to them for their Valentine's Day package. Um, the pattern is more a guideline than it is a full pattern, um, but I really like the chart. Again, that's Love Socks by Devin Clement. So, and his yarn is Baby Ool as well. I had some black and um, some red. So the same red that's in Roxy's socks and then the black. Um, and they are super, super cute. I can't wait for the kids to get them. So that is the project that I'm hoping to finish this evening. Um, the next project that I have been making great progress on is my Opal Advent Blanket. I did not quite finish it this week, um, but I am still very pleased with my progress. I am to the final round, and the final round I am knitting in Opal Sweet and Spicy. This is from Series 3. It's the Saffron colorway, and I had a full skein of it and decided that I wanted to do a full round. Um, and so here is my blanket. It's getting huge. I love it. And um, I started the, um, the final stuff right over here, as you can see. So I think I've probably done maybe a third of it. Um, and so I will continue to work on this and hope to finish this up sometime this week so that next week I can show it to you as a final. Um, originally, I thought I was going to put an I-cord border on the outer edge. I'm not sure that I am at this point. I think I'm probably just going to finish um, the outer round and I'm not going to finish the whole skein of yarn. I think I'm just going to do one full round of this colorway and then stop wherever it stops, which happen happens to not be at um like i marked um because you have to change something every round i have um where i basically started marked with a little marker here that i'm sure you can't see it is um a little unicorn because why not um so i will go partially through the 14th round basically um and it is not huge it is definitely a link a lap blanket but i think it will be fine it will probably live in here with this one and be on uh the behind of my couch um and i'd say probably i'm gonna end up about three feet across i will have to wash it and block it and um put some finished measurements on but that is where I'm at. So like I said, I am working on the final section. Sorry, I had some yarn pulled out there. The final section in the final colorway, which um, I think goes well with the other colorways. It's got lavender and orange and yellow, and I think it goes quite nicely. Um, I had an idle scant thought last night that, oh, wow, wouldn't it be awesome if I saved this blanket and bought... Um, another advent calendar next year and added on to it and um to that way lies madness <laughs> because i wanted to be done um i suppose maybe i won't weave in my final end so that if a wild hair takes me part way through the year um i could pull out that final end and add more next year um but i think i'm probably going to leave it about the size that it is so um that is my advent blanket um I want to bring this for the final time next week. So I'm really hoping that I will get this done this week. This is gonna be, this has been a home project for a while just because it's big. Um, so that is what I'm going to work on this week. Now let's talk about the upcoming knits. <laughs> so um, the first thing that I need to do is I have some review yarn 
This is from Delicious Yarns. They um, have a cupcake and ice cream themes. Um, they have swirls and um, they have sprinkles, which are their speckles. Um, my skein is a skein of Sweets Chunky. Um, it is approximately 100 grams, 105 yards, 100% superwash merino in the colorway Raspberry Fudge. So it is these great pinks. It's got a little bit of a lighter pink and then it's also got some brown in there. And I have decided that I am going to knit a hat out of this lusciousness. And I am going to use the Everyday Brew hat that is um, from the Tea Collection by Claire Devine. And, um, it calls for a bulky weight yarn, which is what this is, and I don't usually work with bulky, but um, a warm, cozy hat just sounds great. So I am going to knit that one. The pattern calls for slightly more than 100 yards, so I don't know if I will break into the second skein or not. Um, if I don't, then Roxy is going to get a matching hat. I'll make another one for a littler one um, because these are her colors, but I'm going to make the adult hat first and um, see what it uses. So that is project number one this week to use my delicious yarns so I can give you a review next time. So um, I don't think that will take me very long because a bulky weight hat probably shouldn't take me more than a couple days. Um, I do have some projects that I need to finish, but I am itching to cast on new things. So I selected, um, I am trying to sort of knit along with Willy Wonka Fibers. Um, I totally missed January, but Willy Wonka Fibers is doing a year long challenge where each month she picks a color and something else. Um, last month it was gray and lace. So it was a type of knitting. Um, and gray and so if you knit something in gray or you knit something that had lace in it Then it was considered sort of part of it. And of course she's doing some prize drawings and some fun stuff um, This month it is pink. So I have my pink covered and then her other is a cowl And I decided that this year I want to be serious about um, Using some things that have been in my stash for a while that I just haven't gotten around to using um, and this one has not been in my stash terribly long, probably um, a year or a little over a year, um, but it was a lovely gift. This is a skein of yarn from Australia. Um, my boss went to Australia probably about a year and a half ago now, and I think I talked about this um, when he came back, but when he was going, I joked with him, um, he went for two weeks. He is um, doing some big trips with his wife one a year um, because she wants to go see things before um, they get too old to go do it. So um, he went to Australia and I teased him that what I really wanted as a souvenir from Australia was a sheep. And to be clear, he normally doesn't bring me anything, um, but I just teased him that I wanted him to bring me a sheep. Well, when I came back, when he came back to work, I came in the first morning and there was a big package on my desk. Apparently they had gone to the Australian Wool Museum and he had brought me a brochure from the Wool Museum, but the other thing he had brought me is this beautiful skein. It is, um, I don't know a ton about it. It is 100% Polworth yarn and it came from the shop um, and that's really all it was marked with. Um, I believe it was marked as like 200 or 220 grams. So I'm gonna guess, and it looks like a worsted weight, perhaps maybe um, like a chunky, but not full bulky weight. Um, and it is super soft and really fuzzy. And I'm going to guess, just based on the weight and based on what it looks like, that I probably have between three and 400 yards here. Um, and so I selected a cowl. I selected the lowbrow cowl by Tao Nguyen. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. Um, and so I want to turn this into something um, in part because I want to use up the skein in my stash and because I want to show him um, what I've made from what he brought me. So, and it's been sitting for a little while, so I think it's time and it's still winter so I could use another cowl. So um, that is the next thing that's going to be cast on. Um, if I finish the hat this week, I will start this this week. But then everything is getting put aside for my Ravelenix project. As I mentioned earlier, I am doing a team um, for the Olympics, uh, the Ravelenix Games, and um, I uh, needed a project to do. And I have been talking about doing a sweater and I was a little frustrated because I didn't get um, appropriate gauge on the yarn that I want to use for the sweater that I want to do. Um, and I was going to have to do some math. And originally I thought the Olympics were three weeks and it turns out they're three weekends, but not three weeks. 
So it's only 16 days, and in the middle of that, I am taking a trip to California for a long weekend, for the President's Day weekend. Um, and I'll definitely take my knitting with me, but I'm going for um, a convention, actually, so I will have a lot of time when I can't knit. So I decided to revamp my thinking slightly, and um, to be honest, it's not that much less crazy, but I decided to pick a pattern and yarn that I had in my stash that I knew was the right gauge that I wasn't going to be worried about. So um, I can't remember if I showed you this a while back because I bought a kit for it. Um, it is a Carol Sunday pattern and it is for a poncho. And I think I probably showed it to you um, kind of in one of my favorite things and what I really wanted to do. But it is a cabled poncho. It's got cables and then a little bit of ribbing. And it is this beautiful poncho. It's called Potawatomi, and it is by Carol Sunday. And I ordered the kit from her, which includes, um, it is her Nirvana yarn, which is 80, uh, sorry, 92% merino and 8% cashmere in this lovely mauve colorway. It is called Berry, most appropriately. So, um, like I said, it's not um, that much different um, because uh, my yardage is, this is a DK weight yarn, or I guess it's considered light worsted weight according to her, and the pattern calls for 1200 to 1250 yards. So it's basically like I'm knitting a sweater. I'm just not knitting anything that's fitted and with sleeves. So um, I'm hoping that this will turn out, um, I'm hoping that I'll be able to finish it during during the Ravel Minute games, I will have two five hour flights um, or three hour flights. So, um, plus, I hope enough time. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so, that is what I am going to be working on. And so, come Friday night, February 9th, that's this coming Friday, um, I will be starting on that pattern. So, I have lots of yarn to wind and lots of projects that I want to get through. Um, my hope is that I can finish the hat, the cowl, and the poncho in February, um, and it's a short month, but we'll definitely see. So, finish my socks tonight, finish the hat in a couple nights, get started on the cowl, and then poncho, poncho, poncho. So, um, and then in there somewhere, I still have my Christmas Eve cast on socks. They are hand spun socks. That's kind of next on the list to be finished. And that will get me, I'm sure, into March. So we'll have to see what happens there. So that is the knits and I'm super excited as you might be able to tell. I have lots of winding to do tonight because I do not want to have to do any winding during the Olympics. I just want to knit, knit, knit. So that is my plan. Let's talk about spinning briefly. Um, spinning, I finished the braid that I took with me to Spinsters last week. That's our Spinning Sunday group. This is Folklore by Hello Yarn and it was pink and um, a little bit of purple and then a bunch of greens and tans and browns and it is really, really pretty. I don't think the monitor will do it justice so I will be washing it and taking some photos of it. My guess is it's between 325 and 350 yards, although it is pole worth so it will puff up quite a bit in the bath. Um, so we'll have to see what we get, but it is probably a It'll probably be a sport weight when I get done with it, um, and I will maybe decay, and I will um, take photos of that, and that one is destined for the shop. So if that one um, appeals to you, check it out. So the other thing that we did last Sunday, um, which is a tradition, I think I've talked about it before, I am part of a spinning group um, in kind of eastern to not exactly central Kansas, but Topeka and slightly west of there. And we rotate around and every year in January, providing that the weather is good, we go to Harveyville, which is where Yarn School is located. It's the Harveyville Arts Collective. Um, and we go out there to spin. It's a couple hours from my house. And um, the fun thing that we do in January is we call them crazy bats. And the deal is you bring, um, anyone who wants to participate brings four ounces of fiber. And um, it should definitely be something that you don't love. Basically, you're bringing the thing that you dyed that looks terrible, the fiber that you bought that you can't imagine what you would actually do with it, um, the thing that you dyed that's slightly felted or a braid that's been sitting in your stash forever that's compacted that just doesn't sing to you, 
um, a rougher fiber that just isn't right. Basically, you bring the stuff that normally you wouldn't um, bring to exchange with other people. And you bring all of this stuff and we all get together and however many people are there, we divide it, um, we divide our fiber that many ways. And then everybody um, gets on the drum carters and gets to card together um, crazy, a crazy bat or crazy bats of all of the fiber. So basically we all end up with m much the same fiber. Obviously if there are variegated braids, everybody gets little different sections, but we end up with all the same fiber and the way you card it together and the way you spin it makes a huge difference in the way it looks at the end. So it is really fun to see how different everybody's bats come out and then also how different everybody's spins come out. So this time we had people brought a lot of extra fiber. So my guess is I have between six and eight ounces of fiber here rather than four. Um, but I divided it into two sections, and the first section is what I'm calling kind of the Monet or Water Lilies bat. And it is a lot of pinks and purples and some blues, but there was also some really pretty green. Um, and you might be able to see there's a little there's a little bit more purples down there. So that is what is on the inside of my bat. And then um, I got for um, the Christmas exchange, somebody put an ounce of Firestar and Angelina in my Christmas exchange package. And so I brought that with me and shared it with everyone because I thought it would be nice if we wanted to put um, a little sparkle in our bats. So um, like I said, this one is kind of the Monet Water Lilies Pastels kind of fun one. And then the other is totally not my colors. Um, every year it's interesting to see what people bring because people bring colors that they aren't attracted to but um, some years we end up with a lot of neutrals, some years we end up with a lot of brights. Um, this year we ended up with a lot of oranges and browns and of course that's really not my um, wheelhouse. But so I pulled the oranges and browns and some greens out and I kind of put them together in another bat. And as you can see, this one has like the greens and the browns and a little bit of the blues. And then on the other side, we have the flaming reds and oranges. And then there's also a lot of a lot of orange sparkle in that. So that is the very not me bat. Um, but to be honest, it's the one that I'm kind of most excited about spinning. And I'm probably going to start it tonight. So like I said, I think I have between six and eight ounces of fiber here. These will um, not be destined for the shop, A, because I have no idea how they're gonna look um, when I get done with them, they could be super muddy, um, and B, because I have no idea what's in them. It was a little bit of everything that people brought um, and I couldn't tell you like what the fiber makeup is, so I wouldn't want anyone to try and use it for a project. So these will be for me this week, but I plan to spin these up and hopefully have these to show you next week. So that is what I've got going on. It's a lot. I'm hoping to finish those bats ahead of the Olympic Games because I suspect for the Olympic Games, I will probably take a break on the spinning. Um, and I will be here to podcast next weekend, but the following weekend I will not because I will be in Los Angeles. Um, just as a quick note, what I'm doing in Los Angeles is I am going to the Los Angeles International Pen Show. Um, I've mentioned a few times this year that I have kind of gotten into fountain pens and um, my friend Anna, who is also a knitter and in my knitting group, is very into fountain pens. She is the one who runs the well-appointed desk and I have been doing a little bit of blog writing for her and some ink reviews and some of that kind of stuff and um, I decided that the LA Pen Show would be a great pen show to go to. Um, in part because I love Los Angeles, in part because who wouldn't want to go someplace warm in the middle of February. And um, I will get to see my parents too, and my dad will come to the Fountain Pen Show um, for at least one of the days. So it's going to be a fun trip. We're just getting out of Dodge for a little while. Um, I will leave on a Thursday night and be back late on a Monday night. Um, so there will be no podcast that weekend. That is the weekend of um, the 18th which will be right in the middle of the Olympics. So I'll have to cheer you along from the Ravelry group and with my Instagram pics from afar. So that is what I've got for you this week. Please come and join our team if you are interested. Um, it's all about picking a challenge that is right for you. Um, so if your challenge is to finish a whip that you have laying around or knit a pair of socks, 
Um, whatever you think is doable in 16 days, um, please come and join us. It should be fun. I'm going to um, award some prizes along the way for chatting. That'll probably mostly be patterns. Um, but I will pull out some yarns and fibers as prizes and I will maybe post those next week. Um, I will accept all Ravelry crafts. A lot of people talk about it as knitting, but I will accept knitting projects, weaving projects, spinning projects, and crocheting projects. So whatever you think you want to do, set a goal for yourself and see what you can do. So thank you for joining me. I hope that you have a wonderful week ahead. And I will say, as I always do, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping, and I'll see you next time. Bye!